Hello America, this is Call of Duty Goddess. Today is June the 24th, 2016. I'm at Center for Individual Freedom at an article titled Horror and Hush Up in Twin Falls, Idaho. And that is by Michelle Malkin, dated Wednesday, June the 22nd, 2016. Something wicked happened in Idaho's rural Magic Valley. The evil has been compounded by politicians, media, and special interest groups doing their damnedest to suppress the story and quell a righteous citizen rebellion. On June the 7th, a brief news item appeared on local Twin Falls, Idaho-based KMVT about the reported sexual assault that possibly occurred near the Fawnbrook Apartments five days earlier. Unconfirmed accounts of the alleged crime on conservative-leaning websites, plus reports from area members of anti-jihad activists Bridget Gabrielle's Act for America group and longtime watchdog Ann Corcoran's Refugee Resettlement Watch blog, culminated in coverage on the powerhouse Drudge Report. The social media groundswell, untethered from the constraints of political correctness, forced government authorities to respond. Police in the local prosecutor's office grudgingly confirmed that an investigation had begun into the incident. The victim, a mentally disabled five-year-old girl. The alleged perpetrators, three boys, ages 7, 10, and 14, from Sudanese and Iraqi immigrant families, predominantly Muslim who have been in the country for less than two years, all but confirming that they are refugees. What happened? The case is under seal because it involves minors. But the prosecutor said there is videotape of the alleged sexual assault, a fact which local activists first divulged, not the police. Boys in Twin Falls sexual assault case released from custody. And that's from the Idaho Statesman dated June the 24th, 2016. The boys, 10 and 14, were released to the custody of their parents while the legal case against them moves forward. U.S. Attorney for Idaho Wendy Olson says our office is prepared to move against anyone who threatens, harasses people, or obstructs law enforcement officers. I bet that's geared toward American citizens and not refugees. Just a guess, though. Now to find out about the boys, we're at Refugee Resettlement Watch at an article titled Boys in Idaho Sexual Assault Case Released from Custody, and that's dated June the 24th, 2016. Here's the latest, including more on care, more concerned with the anti-Muslim angle on the story than for the little girl's well-being. Two Muslim migrant boys were released into the custody of their parents following a hearing Thursday afternoon. They were reportedly released from the Snake River Juvenile Detention Center in Twin Falls pending their next hearing. According to witnesses on the scene, the boys' families were seen smiling and hugging after the hearing ended shortly after 3 p.m. Thursday. They were waving their arms to the heavens, smiling and throwing their arms around each other, an eyewitness outside the detention center told WND. The Two Sudanese boys, ages 10 and 14, were reportedly ordered by the court to have no contact with the victim, a five-year-old special needs girl, whom they allegedly assaulted in the laundry room of their apartment complex on June 2nd. They were not arrested until late last week. A third boy, age seven, was also involved but was never arrested. The younger boys allegedly urinated on the girl and one of them inappropriately touched her, but the extent of that violation is not known. The case has been sealed by the prosecutor, which is standard procedure in juvenile offenses. So let's get back to the other article here. Here's the sickening thing. The people who should have been asking tough questions like, you know, mainstream journalists have spent more time attacking local whistleblowers and bloggers than they've spent demanding answers and holding public officials accountable. Sound familiar? Why? Consider the backdrop. Residents in Twin Falls have been worried about the impact of an increasing influx of refugees, many from jihad-coddling countries, over the past several years. Their concerns about crime, welfare, health care, and schools echo those of communities across the country who are bearing the coercive brunt of Beltway Bleeding Hearts, refugee resettlement policies, enacted in a shroud of secrecy. I think she's being much too nice to them. They are actively 
pushing for the caliphate and making money off of it. But hey, that's just my opinion. Members of the Twin Falls City Council smugly liken refugee resettlement critics to white supremacists. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get up and run for your local office. Start at your school board. I just have to say that. Go to your school board. Get in there. Regional newspapers, including the Idaho Statesman and the Spokane Spokesman Review, rushed to discredit the on-scene reporting of Internet writers such as Leo Homan, who had interviewed a witness to the crime for World Net Daily. Jolene Payne, an 89-year-old retired nurse who lives at the complex, told Holman she had spotted one of the boys taking pictures with a camera outside the apartment complex's laundry room. She went inside and found the five-year-old naked with two of the younger boys naked standing over her. The worst thing was the way they peed all over her clothes, she recounted. Pro-mass immigration advocates may not like the sources of some of the original reporting that forced the case into the sunlight, but the watchdogs got more right than wrong. These critics now have Twin Falls political leaders sputtering to cover their backsides and police brass defending themselves against explosive charges that they drag their feet. Well, you saw the time frame there. If it happened the first week of June and they didn't do anything until just this past week, there's a problem. There's a big problem. Instead, the professional journalist dwelt on a few early factual errors about whether the boys were from Syria and whether a knife was used. Sound familiar again? The callousness of local officials and indifference of local and national media reminds me of Lavoie Fenicum and what happened in Oregon and it's just a mirror image of how callous the local officials are and how crooked they are and how the media is working lockstep with them. Makes you wonder what they're getting in return for it. Hmm. Anyway, let's check out a short video from this. Red old blooded American. This is my country, damn it. And bringing in these people from other countries, if they don't abide by our rules, they need to get the hell back to their country. Tonight, widespread rumors circulating in the Twin Falls area that three Syrian refugees raped a young child. The story has spread like wildfire on social media and several blogs. Six on Your Side has confirmed an incident did take place, but investigators say many of the details being spread online are simply not true. Six on Your Side's Lacey Darrow, as you can see, attended a meeting and is joining us live from Twin Falls with the very latest Lacey. That's right, Donna and Michelle. Uh, during that meeting, one major piece of information was clarified. Now, tonight we learned that these attackers were not Syrian refugees like it was widely spreading online, but rather these boys are from Iraq and Sudan. Well, that settles it. I feel so much better now knowing that they're not from Syria and instead from another Muslim country, Iraq and Sudan. Boy, that makes such a big difference. Not. And they've been here in the Twin Falls area for less than two years. Now, earlier today, the prosecuting attorney said three boys aged 14, 10, and 7 were part of an attack that took place at the Fawnbrook Apartments, where a five-year-old girl was assaulted. Officials say that only one of the boys, age 7, had any physical contact with the girl. The two older boys are said to have been watching and cheering the 7-year-old on. While there was no knife like many on Online blogs are saying the fact that these children were not born here in America made for a heated community comment portion of the meeting, many specifically addressing issues with immigrants coming here to Twin Falls. The things that are happening as they continue to happen in this town, they're on your head, your head, your head, your head, yours, yours. This has got to stop. They are not compatible with our culture. They hate us. They don't want to be Americans. 
Now, Twin Falls police say they are handling this as a serious event, but this isn't a TV show, and these cases are not solved in an hour. These things do take time. Now, police say there was a recording of some of the assaults that police have reviewed. Now, the chief of police said the judge has sealed the case, and therefore he cannot go into detail on many of those specifics, but he says new information will likely come out with time. Now, we will continue to follow this story for you right here on Six on Your Side and on our website, sixonyourside.com. Live in Twin Falls, Lacey Darrow, Six on Your Side. This is Call of Duty Goddess signing off, and as always, I'll leave the links below, and I've got your six.